Hello and welcome to These Are the Days of Our Podcast. I'm Lisa. And I'm Jen. And today we're talking about Plastic Free July. Yay. What month's it in? We celebrate this in July. <laughs> also, all year round, we'll get to it. We love plastic free. We do love plastic free. So, Lisa, plastic free July. We try to reduce the amount of plastic in our life. So, t- can you tell me what one of your favorite plastic free items in your life is? Okay. This is after some pondering. Of course. I think the ones that are the most useful, and it's just, everything's just such a small change, right? Like your razor, your toothbrush, et cetera, et cetera. But I think my makeup remover pads, which are just machine washable, and I've had those for so long, and they're still really good. They're really soft on your eyes, taking off eye makeup, and yeah, then you're not constantly throwing away those like micro pads, which turns out has some sort of plastic in it so yay yeah i'm just gonna tell you my favorite uh thing and which segues nicely into a fail so one of the swaps as we said it's a lot of personal care items and the easiest and best ones i think are the little changes that just substitute out what you would normally be using and i really like these toothy tabs these like little pellets of dried toothpaste basically and you just chew them up in your mouth and then they are toothpaste they come in a compostable paper bag but speaking of segueing into our biggest swap fails or plastic free fails the current brand of toothy tabs that i'm using I had a free trial and I apparently accidentally signed up for three free trials. And you know how anytime a free trial expires, you're automatically subscribed to get that product. I woke up this morning to over 50 pound purchase (laughs) of toothpaste and I immediately thought this was fraud I was like oh my goodness and I canceled my credit card and contacted the company that makes the toothy tabs and they said no you just signed up for three recurring subscriptions so today I have just bought more than a year's worth of toothpaste but necessary it's plastic free (laughs) So winning in one aspect of life. Yeah, but you canceled your plastic card to get another plastic card. (laughs) So perfect. Good for the environment. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Hashtag eco warriors. Yeah. What about you? Tell me about one of your fails. I do think my consistent failure is my ability to never have like a reusable bag when I decided to pop into the grocery store. And some things I'll just carry, but then sometimes you get too excited at the grocery store and then you see things on sale and then you see delicious things and then you have to get the plastic bags. I understand. So why are we talking about plastic? Um, Well, plastic is real bad. Tell me more. So it's really inexpensive and durable. As of 2018, there was 380 million tons plastic produced in the world each year. Each year. That's a lot. And so as of 2020, the beginning of 2020, the global mass of produced plastic exceeds the biomass of all land and marine animals. So like all the animals in, in the land and the sea, including humans... All our combined weight is less than plastic. And plus, it's not even heavy. So much plastic. I think I saw something that the amount annually put in the ocean is the biomass of all of the blue whales. Yeah, it's possible. There's a lot of stats. We love a good stat, but there was so many stats that you kind of have to be like, 
Okay, so let's pick and choose the stats. Basically, there are big stats that say plastic is real bad. Yeah, so, yeah, very true. Uh, It's real bad. Well, basically, because it's so durable and, and inexpensive, it's obviously an extremely popular choice, especially in developing countries. Like, you know, the biggest plastic polluters are like China, Indonesia, uh, Mexico, India. They're not the ones... I mean, the U.S. has a large population, but they're not the biggest plastic polluter. So you can kind of like see where where the inexpensive NIFs come comes from. But the chemical structure of plastics renders most of it resistant to any natural process of degradation, and so it literally degrades so slowly, so slowly. Like some of it never degrades. And then Mm. some of it will just degrade into tiny microplastics, which, again, we know are the worst. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to tell you some major themes about why plastic is the worst. As microplastic, it is everywhere in this world from the top of Mount Everest. If you listened to our last episode, Mm -hmm. you'd know because dead bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they've even found it in the Marianas Trench which is the deepest part of the ocean. It's literally everywhere. They found it in unborn fetuses as well. 90% of humans will test positive to having microplastics in them. Another major problem, plastics in the ocean. There is so much plastic in the ocean. In 1992, a shipping container that contained 28,000 rubber duckies was lost in sea somewhere between Hong Kong and the US and the rubber duckies are still getting washed ashore and they're like perfectly fine so this is like what year was this 1992 so like I know it's not that long ago but most of the plastic in the Pacific garbage patch is from 1950s onwards and it's not broken down hence why it's in the Pacific garbage patch which is they estimate I don't even know how to like make this understandable it's 1.6 million square kilometers that's like more than europe of garbage in the ocean oceans are huge yeah just huge well we can lose an entire plane in an ocean like that that will forever freak me out the malaysian airways the malaysian air thing will always freak me out that we have all of this stuff and we can lose an entire plane in the ocean because they're so big. Yeah. I have a question about the garbage patch that you may or may not be able to answer. Are you able to stand on it? Is it almost like an island? No. Okay, so I actually know this, not from this research, because you know I love Mm -hmm. the ocean cleanup, which was started by that young dutch man he started it when he was like a teenager and then he became like you know the like one of the most famous teens in the world and then started the ocean cleanup which was is to clean up the pacific garbage patch and i was like oh my god is it literally like a landmass where you could just like build civilization on floating plastic but it's actually not it's actually mostly microplastics you might think that it looks like really clear but like it's just the way the currents swirl, as, as the scientific term, in the Pacific Ocean, they force all of it into basically the center of the Pacific, which has this garbage patch. And so it's anything from like large plastics to like any sort of debris that's in the ocean. Lots of fishing nets. Lots. That's a big one. Oh, what do you think is the number one plastic polluter in the ocean? Uh, well, I would have guessed fishing nets, but since you're saying that, I'm going to say no. I No, not even close. I'll give you a hint. Ancient Egypt. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, like cigarettes? Yeah, cigarette butts. That makes sense because I know that it's the most common item of trash picked up in beach cleanups and stuff like that. So, Yeah. So it's like real, real bad. Okay. Then some other things. This one I didn't know, (laughs) which I just feel like it's probably common knowledge. And you're like, oh, all plastics are made from petroleum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the main product of fracking is plastic is like, like 
those resin beads. And I was like, fracking is possibly one of the worst things you can do to like natural gas. And that's their main product is plastic. And I was like, it is awful. So fracking is extra, extra bad. Extra, extra bad. It also uses a ton of water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so perfect. And our favorite, like we mentioned, it's in our food. <laughs> so it's in uh, most seafood you eat has micro plastic. It's been found in beer. So a lot of beers have plastic. It's in most salt. So any salt you have has microplastics. And so in addition to like when it does break down, it does so very dangerously. So it contains some serious toxins like BPA, which everyone hears about. But there's some other ones that I can't pronounce. So we'll just skip them. But really, really bad ones. And these are super harmful to humans. So they mostly affect young children and Mm -hmm. fetuses. Mm -hmm. And because it BPA (laughs) mimics the hormone estrogen in our bodies. And so it it messes up things like metabolism, your growth, sleep. And then most importantly, in men, it leads to male infertility. Mm -hmm. So maybe... We need to do something like have plastic free life, not just July. Yes. I wanted to also mention, because I feel like this is something that I don't know that I knew five years ago, all of the synthetic clothing that we have. So anything that's made out of polyester, when you wash it, it will shed microplastics. So it's not just plastics that are sitting around trying to break down in landfills that are generating microplastics, but we are actually, every time we run our washing machine with our like very cute spandex, we're releasing some more microplastics. And mm-hmm. that's something that I don't think I really realized until quite recently. Yeah, it makes me really want to buy the contraption that goes on the washing machine to mm-hmm. like that filters out the microplastics to get them out of the the water system. Yeah. But I a obviously could never install something like that. <laughs> and yeah, mostly I'd buy it and be like, it doesn't fit your very specific awful British washer. So you just wasted 40 pounds on nothing. Yeah, there are a couple of different options. I know this is a bit of an offshoot, but it's it's interesting and useful. So there is a contraption that you attach to your washing machine somewhere on the pipes and the plumbing to stop the microplastics. But you can also get something called a guppy bag. And there's a couple of others and you put all of your clothes inside of that bag and it somehow traps them. And then there's also another one that I found that's kind of just like a a thing that you throw in the wash, kind of like dryer balls, and it just like collects microplastics. Oh, yeah, I want that. Yeah. I want that. It's pretty cool. So there are a bunch of solutions. So that's, I guess, on the good side is that now that people are recognizing that microplastics are such a big issue, there are some creative solutions. But we'll get to that a little bit later because you did such a beautiful segue and then I ruined it. Yeah, you did. It was such a good one. So like, it shouldn't be a plastic for a year. It should be a plastic free July. No, opposite. (laughs) The other way around. Okay, so plastic free July. Where did it start? It actually started in July. Well, why July though? Why July? Why? So Rebecca Prince Ruiz, who's the founder of Plastic Free Foundation, was working in Western Australia, and she basically started with her team this one of the most influential environmental campaigns. Basically, the reason it's Plastic Free July is because it was July when they were talking about it. There's no reason to pick July. It was just, (laughs) oh, we might as we should just try and reduce our plastic waste and it, all of, all the other good months were taken yeah and it just <laughs> happened to be july so it's been going for more than a decade in last july alone they estimated that 326 million people took part in the challenge from 177 countries oh wow that's pretty good which is amazing. And they said in this survey that 29% of the world's population were aware of a plastic-free July challenge. 
That's huge. That's huge, especially because I wasn't aware of it. So <laughs> I'm not in that 29%. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get it to 30%. You know, the three I'm other just, people that listen to this podcast. Ron Weasley, Colleen, <laughs> Andrew Sparks, come on. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna hit this 30% mark. Yeah. And plastic-free participants on average reduce their household waste and recycling by 21 kilograms per person per year, which is about 5%. Of the people that participated in plastic-free July challenges, 85% said that they wanted to make those changes to become a habit or a way of life. So that it's not just plastic-free July. It's plastic free always. That's what we really want in life. In general, the idea, I probably should have said this earlier, the idea of Plastic Free July is just trying to reduce and refuse and avoid as much single use plastic as possible. And the way of doing it as a challenge is quite fun because you can try to do anything for a month and just experiment and see how it goes. And as I just mentioned, many people, once they've realized how easy it is to substitute some of their behaviors for something equivalent, it's quite easy to turn that into a habit. So in general, I am a huge fan of trying to find ways of reducing waste. I mean, so much so that sometimes you even pick things up from the garbage and then have to (laughs) get told on. Yeah, so Lisa keeps telling on me to her husband whenever I pick up community snacks or community books okay. or community items that I find okay. on the street and I just decide- Community items is okay. I've picked up community items. I got really excited when I picked up a, a Christmas tree stand and Andrew's like, I can't believe you're doing this. I like was, so- But there is a universal- no on community snacks. There's no such thing as community snacks. Agree to disagree. <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel like this needs to be like an Instagram poll. Like if you found snacks on the floor, would you eat them? And the answer is no. The answer is sometimes. The answer is one person says yes. <laughs> Actually, probably all the dykes horns say yes. Maybe not Allison, but definitely Karen. <laughs> yeah. I think I probably learned about community snacks from Karen. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So In general, I think that Plastic Free July is really powerful because it's drawn so much awareness to the problem of plastic pollution. We weren't talking about stuff like this 10 years ago, and it's been environmental campaigns like this that have really moved the needle in terms of public awareness of why plastic reduction is is important. And in general, it's a really accessible entry point for sustainability because plastic is so visible. It's such a visible reminder of our impact on the environment. It's really easy to do a campaign about it because you just need to go to a beautiful mountaintop or a beach and you take a picture where there's a fast food wrapper on the ground. And then it's just like, oh, look at what we're doing. We're making an impact. But I do think that. There are some some kind of negative sides to Plastic Free July that we probably should mention as well. That is only in July? Yes, that is only in July. So I'm not saying that this campaign to reduce plastic is a problem. I just think that at an individual level, plastic-free living can be a really just a marker of a lot of privilege. Oh, yeah. Like how the biggest polluters are the poorest countries because it's so cheap. Yes, but also just in the UK or in Canada, being able to live a plastic-free lifestyle is like quite uh, dependent on having ex- access to specialty stores and also access to time. And probably a bit of wealth because yeah, yeah. all of it is like so much more expensive. Has anyone ever spent 50 pounds on toothpaste (laughs) no because a toothpaste is two pounds for a bottle like a a little tube (laughs) yeah 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 so and the other thing is so lisa and i got really excited because a new plastic free zero waste store opened up in our neighborhood and we've lost our minds and they're going to have all of our money 
And it's lovely because they have an oat milk dispenser and I can bring a glass bottle and I feel like I'm living in the old timey old days where you had a little milk bottle from the milkman. But it takes, it's more expensive and it takes a lot of time. So rather than being able to go just to one stop shop and get everything that you need for your weekly shop, this requires a separate trip where I'll be getting some items where like there's nuts and seeds and laundry detergent and oat milk, but I can't do my entire grocery shop there. And so if you are making these trips by car, you end up spending more resources to go to multiple stores. It's only for people that have time on their hands. Like I don't have kids. I don't have a second job. So I can spend my time wandering through different grocery stores to pick up my weekly needs. But I do think that it is quite a marker of privilege. And it also, there's that Instagram side of plastic free where you just like post a picture of how aesthetically pleasing all of your glass jars are. And like kind of white person savior complex yeah. where you're like, Oh, look at how much better I am than you for being plastic free. Exactly. So I think that that's one of the slightly more negative sides to it. And there's other things at play, though. So when we... Well, I think it's just like very... It can be very inaccessible. And first time I ever really heard this come up was in the behind the scenes of planet Earth. And then they were in the Sahara Desert and they were talking about all the garbage around and whatever and they're like you can't fix climate change or say plastic pollution if you can't get people who's just trying to survive off their basic needs to be able to go plastic free like if you mm -hmm. can't even survive why are you going to spend more money on something that's plastic free it's not even in your mindset exactly but also i think that this speaks to a larger issue of like offloading corporate and governmental responsibilities to the individual level. And oh. I thought this, so this is good the one, in Jen. my bonnet. Oh, <laughs> Jen, this is so good. You are so smart. You are so smart. This so, is a good one. My favorite example from the last week was, you know, when the ocean caught on fire. Oh, yeah. Recently. That one when you're like, that's not Photoshop. Yeah. So basically, the ocean was on fire if you missed it because of a gas leak and fire. And, <laughs> and, and a fire. Yeah. And then it caught on fire and the ocean was burning. And there's this picture of the ocean fire. And then there's these uh, like little fire boats that are trying to spray water on okay. it. It's like, <laughs> it's just mind buckling to me. Like water on top of water. Go I know. On. <laughs> I know. But it's obviously was immediately made into a meme. And the one that most encapsulates what I'm trying to say is they have these tiny little boats just like spitting on this raging fire. And it's like, no plastic straws, turning off your air conditioner, <laughs> recycling. And then there's just this giant <laughs> inferno, which is unfettered capitalism and climate disaster. And the thing is, we're living in this dystopian film where the ocean is on fire. And we're saying, you know what, though? If you just say no to that plastic straw, you're, yeah. you're feeling good about yourself and you're kind of ignoring this bigger picture that it's really like so, it's such a big oh, issue. I have another good meme for you that it would mm. be. It's like, when the evergreen got stuck in the Suez Canal and they had the one little digger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just like, this is just Jen and Lisa. We're just taking our little plastic straws out of the ocean. Yeah. Because we just, we don't use them. <laughs> yeah. We're just digging because we remembered our bag for the groceries. Yeah. And that's like, I'm, I don't want to dissuade anyone from trying to make positive changes. But at the same time, we can't say that this is an individual responsibility. So the general public has been told you should reduce your carbon footprint by like shortening your showers and sorting your recycling or like. Oh, here's a stat for you. I saw on the Instagram 
from Greenpeace, which advertises to me all the time to donate mm-hmm. to them. Mm-hmm. Of the plastic that is recycled in the UK, only 9% actually gets recycled. So, oh, first be shamed for not recycling. Just kidding. The whole waste management system is broken. We yeah. know that. Yeah. So that is that is an issue, definitely. And a hundred companies in the world account for 71% of total greenhouse gas emissions. That's the companies. So until we insist that there's some sort of like corporate responsibility, which let's be honest, has to be mandated in international law, which is something that again, we are experts in. We are dermatologists, and chemists, and experts in environmental law. But basically, trying to shift this responsibility onto the individual for an environmental problem that we literally cannot fix. I can not have another single plastic bag in my life for the next 50 years, and we're still going to be in a climate emergency if nothing changes at a much bigger level. So that is my that is my bee in the bonnet (laughs) Mm. so again just ignoring the whole rant that I just had of how do we actually make a difference so it's not just saying no to a plastic bag there are other ways that you can actually try to live more sustainably so then a couple of quick tips is thinking about the life cycle of the entire product so some of the products that we buy and we buy in plastic is actually really good because you will use it every single day and having that durability is actually something that's really good rather than right like like our unitards yes <laughs> yeah i mean yes what? no explanation nope. needed just our unitards <laughs> we are a fan number one priority and the life cycle yeah. of that product forever exactly so Moving on. It's also broadening your perspective and thinking about that broader impact that getting your goods. So we were saying that getting your groceries delivered without plastic bags is good. And but in the UK, you can select delivery slots that are greener because other people in your neighborhood are getting their food delivered at the same time. Or, you know, you could use a delivery service that allows you to combine all of the things together rather than opting for the same day or next day shippings to reduce the the footprint of more deliveries. So there's things like that. So it's what I'm trying to say is it's not just plastic. There is a broader perspective that we can be looking at. But if the first step is to skip the straw, then... Like, let's get those turtles' noses out of straws. Straws out of turtle noses. That's the way words work. (laughs) Yeah. Those are the words. Yes. So, in sum, Mm -hmm. plastic is bad. Mm -hmm. Plastic-free July is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plastic-free all the time is probably better. Mm -hmm. But also, we need to remember that there's a bigger picture happening and we can't just fix everything by skipping straws weird that is that is the whole sum i really was hoping that would fix my whole life well i think the unitard will but the straws won't yeah true definitely the unitard okay so i have prepared a lightning round oh good fun test of do 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 is there plastic in that are you ready okay so the first one is an easy one because sort of ready we need to get started gently yeah ease into it clothes yes partially correct some clothes yeah not cotton because the name of that material Uh uh-huh is from the same name of the plant yes also wool is not plastic yeah not as easy yeah to figure out but true (laughs) also not from a plant those are also facts oh wait do vegans not wear wool no they don't they don't and they don't have honey yeah i knew the honey one i always think vegans are gluten-free but they're not they're not it's weird it's really (laughs) weird to me 
Yeah, you always try and get me <laughs> vegan treats, and I'm still allergic to them. That's so weird. Okay, next question. Okay. Receipt paper. Yeah, obviously. Yes. So they do their... <laughs> didn't know it was obvious, but I was like, well, yeah. probably. They are printed on thermo paper that's not recyclable. So they kind of have that like weird shiny bit to Why, it. Why, though? I don't know. I know. Why? Is... It feels unnecessary. It seems like that's probably some sort of weird chemical that... Like someone who works in retail for their entire career probably is inhaling or has their fingers coated in all of the time. Yeah, they're probably infertile. <laughs> Sorry, but it's true. Next one, glitter. Oh, glitter is only plastic. It's so sad. <laughs> I feel like glitter is just secretly evil. Like, A, it's only plastic. And then the only times I want to use glitter is to send glitter bombs to, like, my nemesis is. Well, it, it is the herpes of the craft kingdom. Like, it, exactly. you can never get rid of it. But it also brings me so much joy. I have looked up. There are some eco-friendly brands that are making plastic-free glitter, but it's so expensive. So for now, anything that's sparkly and pretty is probably just plastic. Mm. Money. <laughs> yeah, we know. Well, the good money, like the British pounds and the Canadian dollars. Not American money. It's still paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. so Canadian money now is almost entirely plastic, which is great because mm-hmm. if you leave a $10 bill in your pocket and it goes through the wash, it still exists. Um, but this is one of the ones that's like kind of a question mark because it's so durable that presumably it will last longer and you won't need to make more of it. Yeah, and if the Canadian Mint like lost you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, someone wants to find that. It's like plastic that is always reusable because no one is going to just throw away thousands of bills worth of plastic you know exactly so it's quite a valid use for plastic something that is used endless over and over it's like goes through a lot of things and you want to have something that's durable and that lasts so that's actually it is plastic but that's maybe not the worst thing here's one fireworks i mean i guess so i guess the answer is yes <laughs> the answer is unfortunately yes basically they are just buckets of chemicals and plastic that explode in the sky they make carrot really scared and then they sprinkle down on the earth with tiny little bits of plastic <laughs> that's so bad so- i mean The thing is is that they could probably be made without plastic because fireworks are so old. They're like part of Chinese history. Yeah. And fireworks in Asia, life-changing. If your dog's not around. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, so why don't they just like do it without it? Okay. Speak to the Chinese. They know what they're doing now. Speak to the people making Mm -hmm. the fireworks. Okay. Well, I think you've cottoned on to my game, (laughs) but here's another one that I found interesting. Vehicle tires. Oh, they're like rubber and plastic? Mm Mm-hmm. So, like, natural rubber is from the rubber plant, but a lot of rubber is actually made. I have a rubber tree right here. Fun facts. I'll make you a little tire. I'll make you a tire, and it won't have any plastic in it. There we go. There you go. Because a lot of rubber is synthetic rubber, the rubber that's left on the road often gets washed away or blown into the water. And so 270,000 tons of vehicle tire dust is released globally each year. So that's actually a ton of plastic. So this is where thinking about the ways that you get around and how much you time you spend in a car is important. What? Tea bags. Ending on tea bags. Ending strong. <laughs> well, I know some of the like the fancy ones are plastic free. Mm-hmm. So I think that tea bags did get some attention as of late because they used to be, and a lot of them are still woven with plastic in the tea bag itself, and then heat sealed using polyethylene, which is just plastic. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So. 
those are some But things. if you have like fancy tea, no yeah. plastic in the tea bags. Or you could just be even fancier mm-hmm. and just do no bag tea. Yeah. Okay. Well, those are all of my things and facts. Yeah. Good facts. Ew. Yeah. So you want to know who was born around the day that we're recording this? Yeah, I do. Ernest Hemingway, July 21st. Good novelist. For whom the bell tolls. Farewell to arms? Yeah. Green Hills of Africa. Cat Stevens, July 21st. Oh, this one's really sad. Alex Trebek, July 22nd. Mm Mm-hmm. So sad. And then July 23rd, the man himself who played Harry Potter... Daniel Radcliffe. But not the real Harry Potter. Now, his birthday is July 31st. Everyone knows that. Obviously. Ugh. Obviously. There are other things to celebrate in July as well that aren't about plastic. Yesterday had a lot of space themes on the 20th. It was National Moon Day and Space Exploration Day. So probably a coincidence, but things happening in space... You know what? I just don't care about space. (laughs) Can we just, like, not burn this planet down? Yeah. Like, I don't want to go out there. And you know what? There's probably microplastics there anyway, so... Well, there's, like, so many satellites, and, like, half of them are garbage. So it's just space garbage. So not only do we have garbage here, we have garbage there. That's true. Okay. So you're not into space, but you are into lollipops and it happens to be national lollipop day i'm a fan including ice lollies i think so i'm gonna say yeah and for our non-uk listeners that is popsicles in british and then it is tomorrow is one of my favorite hobbies hammock day so Mm, good one and it happens to be a heat wave in the uk so I'm going to sit in my hammock and it's going to be glorious. That's all. I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye. See you later. These are the days, my friends. The RFS and the sends that sing and dance and make a bunch of noise. So let the fun ensue and learn a thing or two. These are the days. So